So here we have the NATS website and uh, we can search NATS AIS on Google. Uh, that will bring up our NOTAMs. Uh, so look for NOTAMs on the NATS website, AIS website. We'll go for narrow route brief and that will then bring up uh, a new page for narrow route brief and it will show our briefing ID, uh, which is all recorded um, for whatever reason. Uh, we can then put in our departure aerodrome. You can either type in the uh, the code for the aerodrome or you can search. So we'll search for Kemble on this one and then we'll click on the code for Kemble and that will appear in the departure aerodrome. And then in the destination aerodrome, uh, again, you can type in the code or you can search and we'll go for to Western in this example. Click on the search and go for the code for to Western and that will appear in the destination aerodrome. Uh, make sure the date period is uh, correct, obviously, for when you're going to be flying. Uh, this is bringing up the time and date of where I've just logged on. Uh, after setting up an account, obviously, some time ago, but uh, it's, it's free to set up an account with uh, the NATS website. Um, and make sure, obviously, uh, your your departure time and date is the same as well. Uh, check your flight rules for IFR, VFR, or both. Uh, we're going to go VFR on this example and our flight level, not an altitude, guys. It's a flight level. Uh, we're going to go 0505000, zero, and we're going to check uh, 10 nautical miles around our track uh, for information of flights. And we can, in the route, go either direct, which is your uh, DCT, or we can go direct, say, Compton, VOR, or wherever else you wish to go uh, on your route. Um, but uh, I'm just going to keep it simple on this one. And we're not going to be crossing any additional uh, FIRs. We're not going over the water or going abroad. Uh, in the alternate aerodromes, uh, in here you wish to type in, or you can search again for the aerodromes or airports next to you or on your route. Uh, so we're going to go Fairford because that is uh, obviously right next door to Kemble. And we'll want to know what's happening at Fairford as well. Because uh, Fairford sometimes take over Kemble's airspace as a class at Delta. Uh, if they have an air show or, or military stuff going on. And then we'll search other aerodromes and airports uh, along our routes. So we'll go for a Bryce on this one. So obviously Bryce radar we use. And we've got Bryce Norton next to Fairford. And then uh, once that's in the list, we can look at, say, uh, an alternate uh, airport or aerodrome, uh, just in case we can't get back to uh, Kemble. So we'll, we'll do Gloucester for this. If there's a problem with Kemble, at least we know we can go to Gloucester. So we'll click on the code there. And... We now know uh, we're going to get the information of what's happening at Gloucester as well and um, any, anything else across the airspace which we're going to be flying. So press submit and that will bring up your pre-flight bulletin information and it will also give you uh, when the bulletin was generated and the reference number. Uh, you don't need to keep that. I usually PDF these. Uh, it will show you your flight rules and uh, what the information is including, in our case, no TAMs, and your departing and your destination airports and your alternatives. And then it will bring up the information. Uh, so here we've got Kemble, and it's given us the information for Kemble. Uh, so in this case, obviously, we've got COVID-19 information. Um, we've got the AD operating on limited hours, and we're close to visiting aircraft on Sundays and Mondays. Uh, to Western, it says nil, but uh, I would check their website just to make sure there's uh, there's no new rules or anything happening. And then obviously Fairford comes up and gives you all the information for Fairford, Bryce, and Gloucester. Uh, so Gloucester there, uh, Gloucester surveillance uh, isn't quite available. And then we go into the uh, realms of information uh, that you need to read through. So uh, there may be hot air balloons, there could be cranes, uh, there could be all sorts of things going on. Uh, so just need to check that and then check out the nav warnings as well uh, and uh, in here obviously you, you've got the obvious ones uh, don't take your Cessna over to Afghanistan or Egypt or Iran uh, for obvious reasons um, it's not that they don't like high wing it's um, they're just not liking your plane and then uh, obviously COVID information as well 
which is uh, updated on uh, all their information these days. And then as we're looking down here, we've got uh, here, we've got a pipeline inspection. Um, they're actually going up to a max height of 2000 foot above ground level. So obviously you don't want to be in those areas if you're trying to practice uh, engine failures. And always make sure you get end on your reports and then you know that you've actually come to the end of it. Uh, they can be pages long depending on your route and all your alternates. So that's how you put together your pre-flight information bulletin from uh, NATS slash uh, AIS. And hopefully that's going to help someone. And we'll look into the weather now. So going on to the Met Office, set up a free account under General Aviation and you can get your briefing charts for significant weather, uh, low-level spot winds, etc., and your TAFs and METARs. And with your TAFs and METARs, we're going to go um, the south of England and south Wales here, because that's the area we're flying. And you've got your METARs and your TAFs. Remember the R for report and F for forecast. Uh, you can either choose METARs or TAFs, or you can go both. And then you'll see the list of airports and their relevant codes and the METARs and TAFs, uh, the TAFs where available, and the report should always be available. And then going through that information, look for the airports that you're going to be flying in or out of or around, uh, check out the METARs and the TAFs. Uh, it will give you the dates uh, and the times for when that is actually relevant, uh, your Q&H and your dew point and temperatures. Uh, your forecast obviously will, um, again, under times, etc., it'll tell you what's happening at the moment and what it's becoming, uh, if there's going to be a change in weather. And under the briefing charts tab, we can go to uh, low wind uh, forecast, and we can go to the form 215, make sure the dates and the times are correct for your time of flight. And bringing up this one here, uh, this will show us the, uh, the forecast weather for below 10,000 foot. So that means this chart is good for anything up to 10,000 foot. Uh, again, we've got valid days, uh, dates, and times. Uh, your freezing point on here in the far right-hand column. So uh, that'll show us where our freezing points are. And here we've got freezing point 9,000 foot to above the chart allowance. So the triple X means above the 10,000 foot and then look for the areas that you're going to be flying in. And we're going to be flying in the B section. And then uh, looking at the B section, we can check out the surface um, visibility and the weather. And we can also look uh, in the right-hand column uh, at the cloud, uh, whether it's broken or overcast, etc., and where the cloud heights are going to be. So in this case, uh, we've actually got cloud at 8,000 foot to above the charts capability if you like which is uh, 10,000 foot clicking back on the tab again or you can press back get the form 214 again check your dates and your times make sure they're relevant to the time you're flying and then on here again we're looking at form 214 and we're looking at the date and the times uh, there's no point using information that's not valid uh, it will give you the incorrect readings for weather and freezing points and then none of your calculations will work out uh, look for the grid reference within the squares and then relate that to your chart and that will tell you which square obviously on the chart that you're flying within and then look within that square and it will give you the relevant information for, for us say 2000, 2500 foot we're going to be flying at so we've got a wind of 260 at 20 knots and we've got a temperature of plus 11 and then we've got freezing points going up between oh, seven, eight thousand 8000 foot. Uh, so th this, this is all important information and you can't plan a route unless you have the weather. Um, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and hopefully it's been of help.